Nothing is obtained without violence in the realm of the spirit. When it comes to deliverance, when it comes to freedom, the anointing oil shall destroy the yoke. It doesn't say shall break the yoke. It shall come to pass in the day that the burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke. It is the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. It doesn't say the anointing will destroy the yoke. Jesus is saying without the anointing, you're yoked like an animal with a yoke upon you and you're a slave to sin. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away. So his burden is taken away and his yoke from your neck. So his yoke is taken away from your neck. You are free, but now it goes a step further. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Meaning, if somebody tries to yoke you again and you are anointed, the yoke will break into pieces. This thing of like, I fell back into smoking. Where's the anointing? Oh, I fell back into drinking. I, you know, I don't want to do this church thing. There was anointing that was lacking. If the anointing oil was there, every yoke that touches you will be destroyed. Every sin that wants to come close to you, you will master over it. It will not master over you. Every accusation thrown against you will go back to the sender. John chapter number 14 verse 13. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So number one, we got one verse where it says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Let's go second verse. John 11 verse 22. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. This is Martha coming to Jesus. But even now I know, she says, I have a revelation. I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And as I was praying, I heard the Lord saying to me to tell the church, whatever they ask God, God will give them. Have faith in God and have the faith of God that whatever you ask of Him, He will and surely is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ever ask or dream of. That is why we serve Him. We have a testament, an inheritance, a will that we are above. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people, the cream de la cream. You have been given an inheritance, a will, a witness, a testament. You are here. Walk in your royal identity and understand, but wait, there's things that is allotted to me, that is given to me as promises that I must take with violence. There are things in the realm of the spirits that can only be attained by violence. The kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violence taketh it by force. Violence is allowed in the realm of the spirits and things are only obtained by someone that is violent. Aggressively, passionately, desperately, violent after a thing. Be a person that is violent in the spirits. Be a person that has a bulldog tenacity. That is saying, I am not letting go of the promise that God has given me. I'm a haver, not a believer. If He said, I will be this, I will violently and aggressively go. Anything less makes you a lethargic, lazy Christian. So if you're violent, I cannot get anything in the spirit without violence. The kingdom of God suffered violence. And from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assaults. You have to endure violent assaults. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. And violent men seize it by force. Violent men seize it. What? The kingdom, the promise, by force. As a precious prize, a share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with the most ardent zeal and intense exertion. That means just to be a part of the heavenly kingdom. Those who are walking in the kingdom that can cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, that has the anointing and the touch of God upon their lives, to whom the yoke comes on and it is shattered. He says just to have a share of it requires us to sort it with the most ardent zeal and passion and intense exertion. It will be blood, sweat and tears. 
of violence and seeking and pursuing to be a part of this kingdom. I'm not speaking salvation, I'm speaking kingdom. To walk in power, to walk in authority, to walk in dominion. Nothing is obtained without violence in the realm of the Spirit. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything, does that mean a house? Does it mean power? Does it mean anointing? According to His will, He hears us. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will give it to you. When you ask God something, it is His pleasure and His will to give it to you. If only you can believe all things are possible to Him who believes. Do you want to be filled with power? Believe. Do you want to be filled with the anointing? Believe. Do you want to walk in a supernatural? Believe. Am I a prosperity preacher? Yes. Because everything that God does prospers. If you remove the word prosperity, you remove a part of God's name. Where the glory is poured out, the silver and gold follows. People that are in poverty is not because they are humble. People think prosperity preaching is wrong. No, no, no. God says have hard working hands, have hard working feet, work hard and you'll make your way prosperous. Meditate upon this word day and night and you will make your way prosperous and successful. Do you want to see prosperity? Meditate upon the word day and night. Prosperity will follow you. The Jesus I preach will make you clothed in your right mind. He will bless you with catching nets of fish until the nets are broken. He will multiply the fish and the bread until there is so much left over. It is the God of more than enough. That is the Jesus we preach. He was crucified with a robe that was the robe of a king, which was, for example, Louis Vuitton or Gucci. Put on the scripture again. If I can only believe, say this with me, say, if I can only believe, all things are possible for me who believes. It takes one thing, belief. How easy was it for you to believe that Jesus was on the cross and for your sins to be forgiven? The same way it is as easy to believe that all things are possible.